Okay, time for speaker number seven. This is Borju Hazdemir. Her talk is titled, Relaxed or Stressed, The Placenta Foretells the Fetal Future. We all experience stress every day. Stress is part of all of our lives, and believe it or not, it's hard to measure or quantify. One person may be stressed by public speaking, and another by going on a plane. What matters is not just the level or cause of stress, but how it is perceived by an individual. While our response to an unexpected stress, the so-called fight or flight response, is crucial for survival, being chronically stressed has detrimental effects on our health. The focus of my research is a stress-managing hormone that is made and released from our brain and that allows us to cope with the good, the bad, and the ugly aspects of stress in an individual manner. The effect of stress is nowhere as profound as it is on the health of a pregnant mother and that of her unborn child. The time spent in the womb lays the foundation of every person's health before we're even out in the world. For example, male offspring of pregnant mice exposed to stress are more prone to anxiety and depression-like disorders as adults. And interestingly, they have fewer molecules that facilitate the action of the stress-managing hormone. But there's hope. Pregnant women can use various methods to reduce their stress, such as deep breathing, meditation, and yoga. But what we don't know is, when a pregnant mother uses such methods to reduce her stress, will that reduce the effects of her stress on her unborn child? And if it does, how? The research-based evidence is missing. At UCSF, we have pregnant women enrolled in prenatal group programs to reduce pregnancy-related stress. In collaboration with OBGYN and OSHA Center researchers, I am adding stress-reducing mindful breathing practices to this 10-week prenatal group program. I will study the effects of these practices on the mother's health and the effect on the baby that may be reflected in the fetal cord blood and the placenta obtained after birth. The placenta is a fascinating organ that provides the link between an unborn child and the mother. It stores all sorts of information that the baby experiences throughout pregnancy. I will be able to compare the placentas of women who practiced stress reduction to those who didn't. Data obtained from this tissue will reveal the workings of that stress-managing hormone. I already found that in placentae of women who had preterm or premature labor, a certain form of that molecule that facilitates the action of that stress-managing hormone is missing, whereas it is present in the placenta of normal-term births. Was preterm labor due to stress? Could it have been avoided with stress-reducing practices? Thus, my research can impact the future of pre- and postnatal care, from reducing the risk of preterm birth to reducing the risk of a number of problems for babies after birth. Thank you.